We're good? Yeah. Boom. Let's go. Well, Frank Frank said he's good, and then and then it dropped off. <laughs> oh, well, how do I get that thing back up? I was checking my text messages. Well, yeah, you got it. There you go. Back to your screen. That's okay. All right. Well, for now, for now, we'll just we'll just rock and roll and act like uh, we know what we're doing. I'm back on. All right, there you Figured are. Figured it out. There you are, Captain. Okay, so everybody, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, many of you do not know who I am, so I will start with a boring introduction. I'm Jonathan Dawson, and that's about all you need to know about that for now. The reason that I'm here is because I wanted to talk uh, to you and talk with you real quick about some ideas that could help you for uh, closing out your month, talk a little strategy for that. Uh, by now, your management would have told you maybe a little bit about why we're doing this stream. So I'm going to assume that they at least told you that uh, they're talking to me about maybe working with you guys in 2020 uh, because some of you do not know who I am. Uh, I started uh, started a company called Cellcology uh, a few years back. Cellcology is the hybrid of selling and psychology. Uh, it's uh, it's designed to help salespeople, specifically automotive salespeople, uh, solve a few problems uh, and uh, and grow their business. So I want to just focus mostly on what I can do for you because I have a little bit of time this morning. And then if you guys like that, you guys will find out more about me on your own. So I'm gonna kind of hop over the, the main introduction part, get right into the meat and the potatoes of what we're talking about. I wanna survey uh, the room real quick, specifically the Chevy store, cause I see, I obviously have that video so I can see everybody at the Chevy store for now. So this makes it easier for me to talk to Chevy. Uh, can I just real quick see a survey? Uh, if you could just let me know by a raise a hand or something like that, who is the most veteran person in the room right now at Chevy? So I can see who's, who's got the most experience selling cars. All right, one, one of you two that just raised your hand. Can I, the, the gentleman right up front that raised his hand, how, how long have you been selling? Seven years. Sorry, seven years? Seven years. Seven years, fantastic. The guy behind you that raised your hand, how long has that been? About 30. Oh, okay. 35. 35? Yeah. So yeah. you're still, still a rookie trying to figure it out then? <laughs> <laughs> still trying to get this thing figured out? 30, yeah. 35 years in. So 35 yeah. years in or seven years in. In fact, if you've been in the business even five years, you've yeah. probably noticed that the marketplace continues to change. Uh, in 35 years and seven years, man, our industry seems to keep evolving. And the speed of evolution, the speed of change only seems to be compounding. What's changed about our industry in the last five years seems to be substantially more than the previous five and the previous five. <laughs> So with this evolution of change, here's what I believe has not fundamentally changed. So with all the technology that's changed and all the tools that have changed and all the resources that have changed and all the competition that's changed and all the marketing that's changed and all the different ways that people, all these things, all this stuff has changed. Here's what I think has fundamentally not changed. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning. I don't think people fundamentally have changed that much. Now, now I think that people uh, in general, fall into the same kind of patterns that they've always fallen into. I think the reason why a field like psychology can even exist is because like mathematics, psychology is the study of how <laughs> people fall into patterns. I think that people's behaviors fall into certain patterns, certain kind of uh, themes or groups. You can kind of, that's why you can have things like personality types or you can have things like communication styles because people fundamentally kind of group together into, into categories of behaviors or categories of ways of thinking. It's also, by the way, why you can still have things like church affiliation and sports team affiliation and political affiliation, because people, generally speaking, when they find a group or an organization or a cause or anything that resonates with them, they like to collect together, and then that ends up becoming a political party or a church group or a Bible study or a sports team fan group or whatever. People fundamentally um, are the same in different ways. And what I want to talk about for the next little bit is why understanding that psychology can make a huge difference in 2020 for you and your business. Now, I, I identified a couple of the, the more veteran people. Real quick, who's the newest person in the room? Who's, who's, who's like brand new? Anybody like less than a week? A couple people's hands went up. How long have you been in? Four months. Four months. It's, do, you, do you notice how I asked that question? It's like it's like going to prison or something. How long are you in for? Right? <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't mean to phrase it that way. So, 
So four months in. So four months in, you've probably realized the same thing. So the gentleman who said four months who's got the vest on, can, can you come to the camera for just a little bit? Thank you. What's your name? Luis. Luis? Yes, sir. So Luis, in four months, have you already recognized that certain customers uh, and certain objections kind of fall into patterns? Like, for example, Luis, in four months, have you heard things like, I'm just looking in four months? Plenty. Have you heard, I'm not buying today in four months? Mm -hmm. Have you heard, um, I don't have a lot of time in four months? Have you heard that from people? Yes, sir. <laughs> have, I, have you heard your price is too high? All the time. Have you heard, I want to think about it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my point. Luis is four months in. So whether I'm talking to the person four, four months in or four years in or 40 years in, if I had everybody in the room write down the most common things that happen during your day that annoy you, the most common scenarios or challenges that you get every day that bother you, if I had you make a list of all the things that, that, that you wish would change or go away, you would all fundamentally end up with about the same list. Whether you're four months in or four years in or 40 years in, if I said write down the stuff that bothers you, you'd all have the same stuff. And here's what's really good news about that. Here's why that's exciting news. Because what that reveals, that problem that you keep having, what that reveals is a pattern in human behavior. And what I'd like you to do is from now on, I want you to change your mindset a little bit, is I want you to now think of problems as patterns. And instead of saying, the problem I'm having is, I want you to change the language and I want you to say the pattern I'm noticing is, and use that as a different pattern of language. See, because if I give you 15 problems this morning, you wonder why I hate you, right? If I said, here's a problem, I want to give it to you. You're like, I don't need any of your problems, bro. I got enough of my own, back it up, right? Like nobody wants me to give them any problems. But if I said, here's a pattern I want to share with you, you're like, I'm interested. Talk to me more. You see, the brain processes patterns different than it processes problems. It solves patterns different than it solves problems. We emotionally deal with patterns in an objective way, whereas we emotionally deal with problems in a very subjective way. See, problems feel personal to me. So what I'm trying to share with you is, is one big change you can make right away today is stop kind of complaining, stop, stop getting bothered by the same problem happening to you in your sales process. Instead, start realizing that that problem is nothing more than a pattern. And if it's a pattern, what a pattern allows you to do is a pattern allows you to predict behavior. Patterns allow you to predict. That's the nature of a pattern. You see, if I say, Two, four, six, eight. What do you say next? There was two patterns, and the cheerleader in the room got it. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Most of you would say 10. Some of you would say, who do we appreciate? And the pattern would be based on what's your affiliation or context. If you're familiar with sports, if you were a cheerleader or hung out with cheerleaders, or you had a daughter who was a cheerleader, two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? But there's patterns there, two, four, six, eight, 10, two, four, six, eight, who do we appreciate? The point is that there's a pattern which gives you the ability to predict. And if I said two, four, six, eight to a hundred people, eight out of 10 of them would say 10 next. And two out of 10 of them would say, who do we appreciate next? And that pattern gives me the ability to predict. And that prediction power, the power of prediction gives me the ability to anticipate and prevent. And what I'm suggesting to you all right now is that every objection you currently hate is an opportunity for you to dominate. Because the average sales professional hears objections, personalizes them, sees them as a problem, and gets stressed out and figures out how to overcome them. Whereas what I would try to share with you today is that the goal should not be to see an objection as a problem, but to see an objection as an opportunity in the form of a pattern. And that pattern allows me to predict. And wherever I can predict, I can prevent. And the goal should be to prevent objections, not to overcome them. It's to, it's to learn how to prevent something from happening, 
not learn how to overcome something from happening. So Luis, you've been in the business for four months. If you walk up to greet a customer and I said, I want you to gamble, okay? I, I wanna give you a hundred bucks and then you're gonna gamble with your money based on patterns that you've observed. If I said you're gonna walk up to 10 customers, out of those 10 customers, you have to gamble. Do you believe the majority of them will or will not say they're just looking? The majority will or will not say I'm just looking? The majority will. They will. If you were a gambling man, you'd put money down that if I sit out of 10 people, will six out of 10 say I'm just looking and you're saying my money says they're gonna say that to me. If, right. In fact, if I went to a list with you right now, Luis, if I said just looking, not buying today, first stop, I don't have a lot of time. I just want your best price. Those five things, how common are those five things in the first two to five minutes? Very. 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 The, the, the other gentleman who's got seven years in, how common are these? I, I wouldn't say they're that common. I, I don't really look for that. I'm, I'm, I'm asking saying, people what I can help them with, not, not what they can help me with. Sorry, I, I'm not saying whether or not you look for it or not. I'm saying if you walk up and greet the average customer, how many customers on average, when they come to a car dealership are gonna to wanna to be inclined to say things like just looking, not buying today, first stop, don't need any help, just want your best price, don't have a lot of time. How common is that in the industry? That's what I'm asking. 90%. What's that? I think it's about half. So somewhere for half for yourself. Luis, you would say it's greater than half. A little bit more, yeah. Yeah, who else, somebody else gave an answer. How, how common is it? I would say it's 90%. Somebody else you, said it's a You high, can take a handful of those things and the way people have been conditioned throughout life growing up, they're gonna say one of those handful of things every time. Yeah, and what I would suggest, Frank, what I see is sometimes salespeople say, well, I don't pay attention to those or I don't pay too much attention to that or I know how to overcome that or I don't let that stop me. That is not the same as what I'm asking. I'm not asking how good are you at overcoming these things. I'm not asking you how good are you at ignoring these things. I'm saying, do they come up? And if they come up, they come up. Whether or not you ignore them or sidestep them or downplay them or, or overcome them, that's not my question. My question is, do they come up regardless of whether or not you have a way of handling them? And what I'm suggesting in my experience, and I think the room is probably saying, greater than half the time on average, this stuff's gonna happen. And what I'm saying is, if you can see that there's a pattern, your goal going forward should be to recognize that that problem's a pattern, the pattern allows me to predict the prediction allows me to prevent, which means I should be able to get in front of it instead of overcoming it. So I want to give you an example of what that looks like in a couple of ways. So let me, let me share with you what I mean. If you can take a list, and I'm going to encourage all of you to do this today, make a master list of the most common things customers say in the beginning of the sale, like I just gave you. Just looking, not buying today, first stop, don't have a lot of time, uh, just want your best price. I, I just want to know what you can give me for my trade. Vehicle's not for me. You don't have what I want. Whatever it is, write down like five to 10 of them that you hear all the time. Once you have that master list, I want you to try to imagine what if I could say those words to the customer first so that the customer can't use them against me? What if I could introduce them so I don't have to overcome them? Like a waiter who comes to the table at the restaurant and offers you a refill before you ask for one, that's the same mentality I'd like you to have going forward. Don't wait for the customer to say, can I get a refill? And then you have to give them one. Come to the table and offer the refill first. That's the idea. So it would sound something like this, if I can just kind of go through the scenario real quick with you. So if I see a customer out on the lot and I'm trying to use the psychology, I'm gonna start by initiating the very things they're thinking. It sounds like this, I might say, Hi, sir. Welcome to our dealership. Are you here doing some looking or some shopping a little bit today? And by asking that question, are you here doing some looking or some shopping here today? It creates a conversation where the customer now has to hear my words and they have to process what I've said and they have to go, yes, that's what I'm doing. So instead of me saying, what brings you in today? How can I help you today? You know, what kind of help do you guys need today? What are you looking for today? And then the customer says, I'm just looking then I have to overcome it. I'm gonna start with looking so I don't have to overcome it. Hi, sir, welcome to our dealership. Are you here doing some looking or some shopping a little bit today? And what do you think, if you were a gambling man 
and you asked 10 customers, are you here doing some looking or shopping? What do you think out of 10, the majority would say? All of them. What are they going to say? Yes. That's what they're doing. They're going to say yes. You have a pretty safe bet. They're going to say yes to your question. You've now eliminated an objection by introducing it first. And if you think about it, what are they there for? Why are they there? What are they wanting to get out of the conversation? If I ask you, Luis, four months in, why is a customer there this morning? Why did they show up? So, saw a vehicle online and wanted to come and look at it. That's right. They saw a vehicle and they wanted to come look at it. What are they there for then? To buy. To buy. In order to buy, what do they need so that they can make a decision to buy? What do they need to get? Information. Information. Y'all know what I'm talking about. What, this is the beauty of sat patterns in psychology. Everybody's brain is doing the same thing. They're there because they saw a car or they want to look at it. They're there because they want to buy. In order to buy, they need information. What kind of information do they need? The information that they need falls into two camps, two categories of information. What kind of information do they need? Information about what? Vehicle and payment. That's right, the vehicle and the money. Luis, you've never been through my training, but your intuitive mind understands the pattern of behavior. All I'm trying to show you, my friend, is if you apply this pattern to your behaviors and you use it first, you don't have to overcome stuff. That's why I'm trying to show you. Your brain already knows this answer. You're just not using it. So you just told me the two main reasons they're there is for product information and pricing or payment information, right? Information about the car and information about the money. So Luis, watch the way that I use that in my brain to start the sale. So I see Luis out on the lot and I say, hi, sir, welcome to our store. Are you here doing some looking or some shopping today? Go ahead, Luis. Yes, sir. And would you say you're looking more at product information? Are you looking at some of the numbers uh, and the financing information or a little bit of both? What information are you looking for? A little bit of both. Great. I want to be respectful of your time. Can I ask you just a few questions? Yeah, sure. I got time. Fantastic. Look what I've just done in a matter of 12 seconds. I just took just looking away, I just took product and pricing away, and I just took time away in 12 seconds. All by introducing them so I don't have to overcome them. If I start with a classical greeting, hi, welcome to our store, what brings you in today? I'm just looking. Oh, what are you looking for? I just want your best price. Oh, crap. Well, have you driven the car yet, sir? And then we get into a combative mode because now the customer's leading and I'm trying to follow them instead of me leading and the customer's following me. So Luis, what I'm encouraging you to do four months in, the gentleman who's got 35 years in, who's seen all these, you've heard, you've heard every objection you're ever going to hear. Four months in, you've already heard them all. The patterns are all in front of you. What I'm suggesting you to do is I want you to think this way about your next customer. And all I'm asking you to do is when you walk out to greet your next customer, don't let the customer throw the punch. Don't try to block or dodge or duck or dip or dive or duck or dodge the punch. Just don't put yourself in a situation the customer's even swinging. Instead, proactively learn to introduce an objection so you don't have to overcome it and do that throughout the entire sale. How many of you have ever been told you're my first stop? Anybody ever been told you're my first stop? You love that one, don't you? You love it. It's your favorite thing to hear, right? You can't, you can't wait to, to say, well, okay, great. What do I need to do to be your last stop, right? Here's my point. If you let the customer say you're my first stop, it's an objection you now have to overcome. If you introduce it, you no longer have to overcome it. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, where's my gentleman uh, 30 years in the business? Where's he at? You still there? Larry. 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 You want to talk to you. Larry, come on in. Larry, good morning. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Larry, I'm going to ask you just a couple questions. I'd like you to pretend you're a customer for just a minute. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Just a little role play exercise, okay? Sure. I just want you to ask, answer like you think a normal person would in your 30 years experience. Here we go. Larry, I see you out on the lot and I walk out to greet you. And uh, a couple feet away before I get to you, I say something like this. I say, hi, sir. Good morning. Are you here doing some looking or some shopping a little bit this morning? Yeah, I'm looking for the uh, cargo van online. Wonderful. Were you here to get more information on the product and look at the van specifics? Or were you looking at the, the payment and the pricing on the van or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. I just want to check it out. I saw it online. Wonderful. I want to be respectful with your time. Do you mind if I ask a couple questions and I can pull it up for you? Sure, yes. Yeah. 
do you, do you mind if I ask, do we happen to be your first stop as far as cargo vans or have you been doing some other research? No, it's the first stop. Okay. When you, when you went to us first, do you mind if I follow up on that? Was there a particular reason out of all the cargo vans that you could find, was there a particular reason you decided to start with ours first? Yeah, because I sat online and looked at 5,000 of them, and this is seems like the best value. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was in my underwear with a glass of wine. <laughs> and then anyway, you figure yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Little, little, two, little, little TMI there, Larry. Little TMI with the underwear line, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like your vernacular, Larry. <laughs> Nothing like starting my morning imagining that, Larry. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> so listen to the language there, Larry. If I said to the client, do we have the pleasure of being your first stop or have you been to a few places? What do you think most people will say to that? If you say, are we your first stop or have you been to a few places? What are the most logical answers I could get? They'll say it's your first stop. Most people will. Now here's the beauty of this. And some of you are old enough to remember there was a show called The Dating Game. And on that show called The Dating Game, the way it worked is they had a, a host interviewing, let's say, a guy, and they had a panel of beautiful women, or the other way around. They had a, a woman and a panel of, of, of men, not, not necessarily beautiful men. And what would happen is, let's imagine that you all were lined up on this panel. There's this gorgeous woman who is being interviewed by the host, and she gets to ask a question to any of the men in the lineup. Let me ask you a question. If, if you could, would you rather be first if you could, if you had a choice of this woman asking you a question, would you rather she picks you first? I'd say yeah. yes, because yeah. whoever she picks first, she's showing implied interest and desire in. And what I'm suggesting is you think being picked first is an objection that needs to be overcome. And what I'm suggesting is it's a compliment. It's not an objection. The truth you just have is, to frame it that way. The truth is, like you said earlier, things change. It used to be simple. It, everybody sits at home, does their shopping online, and they're, they're here to buy a thing. They already did all their homework and stuff. That's exactly change. right. In fact, here's the way I like to ask the question for some of you. And if you want to play along with me, you can play along and be really easy. It's be a great way to ask the question to your next customer. In fact, if I, if I could ask you all, would you play along with me this morning? This will make you money. I'm about to make you money. Here's what I want you to do. Put your hands like this for me. Put your hands like this. Everybody do it. Just play along. If you're at home, play along. Everybody at Mazda, everybody play along. Watch this. All right. When you, when you were shopping for a car, watch this. Did you start first with the vehicles and then sort the money to match the car? Or did you start first with the, the, the money and then sort the car to match the money. So let's, that's what we're going to ask. Watch this. Here we go. Did you start with the vehicle? Go ahead and do it. Did you start with the vehicle? Everybody, did you start with the vehicle? Did you start with the vehicle? And then match the money to the car? And match the money to the car. Or did you start with the money? Money. And then match the car to the money? And then match the car to the money. Watch it again. Did you start with the vehicle? <laughs> You start, with the you start with the vehicle. You start with the vehicle. And then match the money to the car. And then match the car. Or do you start with the car? Car. And then match the money to the car. If you ask this question at the early part of your process, what you'll discover is how they searched for the vehicle and what their focus was. But this is why this is important as a close. You see, if I discover that you started with the vehicle and then you sorted the money to match the vehicle, what that means is out of all of the thousands and thousands of vehicles out there, you knew what kind of vehicle you wanted. And then out of all the thousands and thousands of prices that are available for that kind of vehicle, you ended up on our price to match to that car and you found the right, uh, right van for the right money and that's why you came to me. When somebody says, I was doing research online, that's how I found you. I always ask, did you start first with the vehicle and sort to the right vehicle and then match the money to the vehicle? Or do you start first with the money and then match the vehicle to the money? How did you do it? And what I'm looking for is a pattern of behavior. How did they do it? Did they start with a budget in mind and say, we're looking to spend about this much money? And then what vehicle gets me there? Or did they start with a vehicle and say, what vehicle do we want? And then what money can we spend on that vehicle? Either way tells me 
what their priority was and their pattern. And based on that pattern, I can use that pattern to close the car deal because I can remind the customer at the close, listen folks, you're the one who told me out of thousands of vehicles that you searched online, you found this one. And out of thousands of prices available for that car, you picked mine. So when you're asking me, is that my best price? It sounds like you already know. It sounds like you already know from a thousand vehicles and a thousand prices, you already know that's what brought you here. You see, it's a pattern. And if you can use a pattern effectively and proactively, you can prevent problems. Let me give you one more thing I want you to practice today. For some of you, this will be helpful, especially end of the month. I want you to, everybody say these words for me. Say selfish. 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 Say generous. Generous. Say selfish. 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 Generous. 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 What you're going to do today and tomorrow is you're going to offer people a chance to be both selfish and generous at the exact same time. I want you today and tomorrow, I want you to say, folks, today is a unique day for you to shop for a car. It is a day that you get to be entirely selfish and entirely generous at the exact same moment in time. You see, you get to be selfish in that you get to find the vehicle that you want and get a great deal on it. You get to be generous in that you get to help me achieve my goal this month and hit my target that I have. You get to be uniquely selfish and uniquely generous at the exact same moment in time. Now, you can use this earlier in your process or you can use this as a close. If the customer says to you they want to think about it, I say, folks, I, I want you to think about it too, but there's one thing I want you to think about more than anything. I want you to think about the uniqueness of time that you're in right now, that today specifically, you get to be completely what? Selfish and generous. generous. And completely generous. At the exact same moment in time. Right now, if you do business with me and if you help me out and if you tell me what needs to happen right now, you and I will have a unique opportunity, selfish and generous. You get to be completely selfish. Tell me what you need. You get to be completely generous. Help me hit my goal. You get to have both at the exact same moment in time. Very rare in time, you get to do exactly both at the same time. Let your customers know today and tomorrow, let your customers know that they have leverage to be selfish and they have the opportunity to be generous. And when you give people a chance to be selfish, do people like being selfish, yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Do people enjoy being generous when they can and helping somebody? Yes, they yeah, do. Yeah. When you create this opportunity for customers, you say you get to be selfish and generous at the same time. It causes people to want to help you and it opens them up in the close. The, the customer today who says they want to think about it, ask them to think about the opportunity to be selfish and generous. And if you can do that, you'll cause a customer to go, you know what, that makes sense. So here's, here's three things I want you to do today to help you sell a car. Number one, be proactive. Think from the customer's perspective. Introduce the objection so you don't have to overcome it. You can start with just walking out and saying, hi folks, you guys look like you're out doing some looking or some shopping today, is that right? And they'll say, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. Say, great, tell me a little bit more about that and let them talk. And you've taken away the number one objection salespeople have gotten for 100 years in our industry just by introducing it. If you practice this and you start stacking them together, you can literally take away almost every objection. Are you folks out doing some looking and shopping today? We are actually, great. Are you looking for product information, pricing, or a little bit of both? We're actually looking at everything. Great. To be respectful with your time, can I ask you a few questions? Sure. Do we have the pleasure of being your first stop, or have you been a few places? No, you're actually our first stop. I say, great. Is that because you did some research online, or what brought you to us? No, we did some research online. You guys have a vehicle we're interested in. Fantastic. Most people, when they search online, they search either by the vehicle, then sort to the money, or they sort by the money, then to the vehicle. Which way did you guys do it? We had a vehicle in mind and we like that and that's why we're here. Fantastic. I have vehicles on the ground. I got vehicles coming in. I got a great dealer network. Is this something you have to do today or do you got some flexibility? We got flexibility. Wonderful. Your flexibility opens up options. The point is I can take every objection. It's not about word tracks. I'm not trying to tell you to memorize word tracks. I'm saying just think about the pattern. There's not an objection a customer's ever told me that I haven't heard before. I want you to think about it. The second thing I want you to do as we wrap up is this. I want you to remember that people soar in a certain way. Ask the customer how they arrived here today, right? They sort in a certain way, ask them how they arrived here today. Car to the money, money to the car. How'd they get here? Third thing, give people a chance to be selfishly generous. If you'll give people a chance to be selfishly generous, 
the customer will open up and you can close them. Listen, everybody, I'm Jonathan Dawson. I'm the founder of Cellcology. Your dealership wanted me to visit with you this morning. I've got some ideas that I think might help you in your career, ideas of marketing and ideas in self-promotion, ideas in referral generation. There's a lot of stuff I could talk about with you, but mostly they just wanted me to introduce myself so you could get a little familiarity with what I do and see if there's some value for you guys as a team. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful to you, and I hope you guys crush it over the next couple of days. I'm going to let you guys get back to work. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you.